again. We are here with our good friend Julie. And today we're going to talk about her Erasmus study in France from having studied in England, right? So let's roll the intro. And Hi, Julie. How are you? Hi. Good to be back. I'm fine. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Today we're here to talk about your university experience doing an Erasmus here in France. Yeah, just briefly, um, today working as a lobbyist and I study political studies in the UK. The funny part was, like I said in the last video, when I got there and I was signing up for my studies, they were like, oh, well, when you're doing French and politics, you should consider a year abroad. It's very rewarding. And I said, well, I am abroad. And they're like, no, you need to go to France. And I was like, okay, well, fine, I'll go to France. <laughs> um, but thankfully, um, as my parents are uh, living in Frankfurt, I had Strasbourg on the list of universities that I could apply for from my politics department. And that was very close, so it was very tempting. And so I ended up studying in France for a year. Tell us about the Erasmus program. What is it? What's the purpose of the program? Not trying to start too far away in the Middle Ages, but Erasmus is basically uh, that chap who wanted to get people closer together through education. And he became the name holder of this whole program, which is uh, intended to bring people from one university to another. As we all know, travel broadens the mind, ideally, and studying abroad is then even more beneficial. Uh, so basically all European universities have set up this exchange scheme in order to make it easier for students to have an international experience while studying and it also uh, amplifies obviously the CV. Some universities as part of language degrees have even incorporated a year abroad as uh, obligatory. It was compulsory for me because I was studying French to go to a French-speaking country. That could have been in France, it could have also been in Belgium, uh, but I was also so because I was studying in the UK and invited to choose something in Canada because of the Commonwealth. They obviously also have Canadian at their disposal to study abroad there. Yeah. Interesting. I'm actually curious about the, the part that you glossed over, that chat in the past that wanted to bring people together. <laughs> Would you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Erasmus was actually Dutch. <laughs> uh, he was from Rotterdam. And he was a very well-known humanist all over Europe. His teachings were so relevant for the European Renaissance that the European Union decided to name the program after him because as uh, a priest back in the day, he was a very well-known theologist and uh, his teachings were very important for the development of Europe. He believed in exchange, spoke quite a lot of languages, archaic, that are not spoken anymore. He actually wrote something that was called Colloquia Familiara, which is intimate discussions. So he was very much into the concept of communication. And I suppose that that is also one of the basic reasons why he became the name donor for this program. Excellent. What a fun fact. But with the European Union being in place and developing from the 1950s onwards, I think it makes a lot of sense getting people together and exchanging because other than the United States, the European Union doesn't have the common, you know, culture and historical background as one people. And we didn't have the chance of the melting pot of coming together and, you know, feeling as one. While with Erasmus, I had professors at uni that were telling me about how rewarding uni was going to be abroad. And I asked one of them, I was like, what do you mean? Well, Half of the people I've been to with Erasmus, they married someone there and they got children. So you better watch what you pick. <laughs> I just, that's why are you serious? So apparently Erasmus is not just a good education scheme. It's also the biggest matchmaking product that we've had in European Union ever since its discovery. <laughs> well, I suppose that would be a side effect since so many young people are meeting each other at the same time. I mean, it's the most impressionable time of your life, right? When you're in your studies. Absolutely. Do you know what? Actually, this is something really important that you're saying right there. This year, like from a sentiment, it's pure freedom. You feel because it's um, in the UK at least, but in many other countries as well, it's introduced as part of your studies that doesn't really count. I mean, yes, you have to pass and you have to get good grades and you have to study. But people are like, oh, they're abroad. It's difficult. You know, it's a different language and everything. So they're being a bit lenient, which means you can really make the best of your time abroad, and people do. 
Excellent. When I hear about Erasmus, I and I see people in Erasmus in my city, it seems like it's just a party year. Would you say that? <laughs> well, I'm inclined to say no because we all need to go study and take advantage of the you you know whole being able to. No, actually, what sarcasm on the side. Being educated in a different country is actually very rewarding because it makes you appreciate the system that you're actually studying in. <laughs> um, having studied in the UK, I got very used to you know the whole individual approach of um, getting people to be in little groups, have practical approaches, present, discuss. It's very interactive. And then I got to France and we were like, 50, 60, 70 people in one class that we had in lectures in the UK, yes, but that that was it really, mainly. And then there's this one professor, he's got his paper, and there he goes, two hours straight. And did you know what? In the UK, all of the students would have been asleep. The French students, there's never been any discipline like it. They're set there on the laptops and they go, and they're typing every single word. My first lesson, I was sat there and I thought, what is going on? And I'll tell you what, at the end of the year, the best thing I did was to befriend, well, on the side of the amazing friendship I made, but the best thing was to befriend a French student because without her notes, I would have failed this year. That was <laughs> granted. Wow. And it, it's essential. If you don't follow through, you know, the learning mechanisms that the students follow in that country, if you don't copy what they do, you're lost. Did you know French before you went? I studied French at school. We had to pass language diplomas in German uh, high school. That was also a precondition for me uh, getting into UK uni uh, and to apply for the French course there. What, did you have to have a level in French? Yeah, I had to have a, a C1 level to apply to university in uh, the UK. But to get into French school, and because I was going to the Institut d'études politiques, which is like administration prep school, you needed to have a C2 level. So I had to prove that I was on C2 level to get in. Yeah. From but you wouldn't be able to follow the classes through, honestly. Like, it's very high standard French education, as archaic as it may be. It is very tough. And like you said, you see how people are educated. But it's very easy from that to deduct how people work later on. They're very structured, they're very hard on themselves, you know, they study hours on end. It's a very, very disciplined system. Okay, now I want to know about the Erasmus program and how you applied. Like, how do you go about applying for that? You said it was part of the university experience already. So let me just touch upon my experience briefly because it's a bit unique in comparison to what other students have to do. Uh, because it was part of my language degree, I was straight away admitted to my university's progress of having to apply. So they basically sent me the options I had and then I had to pick. And then I had to fill out a lot of paperwork and send it to the university and get accepted by them. But because there was a liaison between the universities, they only accepted people from the social studies department from my university. So someone who would have been studying economics and could have just as well done a French degree on the side, they could have never applied for that degree. So it's very, you know, narrowed down and they only have little space so they give out two to three spaces a year mm. and it's very very competitive mm. so going on erasmus as much as it sounds like a party well granted you have worked very hard for it to get there is to say that it's actually for other you know applicants and for the majority of applicants when it's not part of your degree you can still file and you'll get a spot it's just that you won't be as sure which university you're going to get next to the Erasmus scheme that is university, there's also now Erasmus work, which is also great, where you can, you know, apply for a job that you're going to be going into, where you're going to be, you know, learning with a different language and so forth. What I would recommend is always to contact the study abroad team at your university and then, you know, ask them for the liaisons, ask them for the paperwork, and then you can actually follow through with them and they will accompany you on the process of how to apply. Because once you've got the study spot, that's one part, you're not done. Then comes the housing, then comes, you know, the whole uh, account thing. Uh, how do you sign up and get your student card because you need a new ID mm -hmm. to get access to the libraries and so mm -hmm. forth and all that paper trail 
needs to then happen when you arrive in the country but for that you want your housing and everything set and that happens before you leave does your uni help you with uh, setting all that up before you get to the country most universities do because it frankly when you just like i did with the uk when you just move and then you apply for the studies <laughs> it's not a work in the park <laughs> you know you need to get a bank account and everything and in the UK now, after Brexit, that will be a lot more difficult. In the EU, generally, it's okay because you can, you know, as an EU citizen, just change countries. But when you're coming from abroad, abroad, outside the EU, obviously, you know, you need a visa and everything. So I would do that before you leave. When you applied, uh, how long did you have to wait to get the approval of getting into the this place? Was this your first choice, Strasbourg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. um, uh, a felt eternity <laughs> um, it, because it has to not only go through your own university but also the other university it takes quite long do apply as early as you can Sorry. these uh, only allow you the year before so you, you won't be able to go in your second year well in your first year and say oh in my third year I want to go abroad can I apply now that's not going to work. But you should go at the beginning of your second year if you want to take the leap year in your third year to file the paperwork. Okay, okay. How long until from the time that you put in your paperwork to when you found out? A couple of months? Yeah, I think it was about eight to 12 weeks. Okay. Um, just the uni spot. And then after that starts the whole housing process and that is very competitive as well because you're in competition with French students, in my case French students, mm -hmm. who are also applying for housing. Mm -hmm. So you want to start that early as well because they don't guarantee Erasmus housing. Mm -hmm. And for an Erasmus student to get housing in a city, difficult because most landlords are very cautious with that so i would go for student housing or try to go with a group of friends who are all going to the same place and try to you know rent something together also these places are very limited and also in hindsight i was going to say you know when you go with friends you're inclined to speak in, in your language yes. and then you they mix and match with the people in place and that's a bit it's a bit of a shame because then you miss out on mingling with everyone else mm -hmm. so tell us about then your housing experience what was that like <laughs> um student housing isn't the most um how shall i say invested asset uh, in in france so basically i was living in a bit of a you know a suburban migrant city space where you have like all these big uh houses and multi-story places i had nine square meters um and while i was on erasmus i i chose to also work uh in the european parliament and so I went uh, and worked as an assistant for, for a deputy there. And I told my, my boss, I was like, oh, it's incredible. I've got nine square meters and the bathroom included. Can you imagine? He just said to me, very cool, relaxed German guy. He was like, it's study years. What do you expect? And I just went, yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, the upside um, with that is you get to know people very easily and very quickly. I think for Erasmus, it's the best choice because Let's face it, you're going to be out and about meeting people all the time. You will be at uni, you will be partying or you'll be sleeping. So you don't need more space and you meet people easily. So you're not alone, I think. And mingling and to make the most of your year abroad, you need to mingle. It's really essential. So it's good to get yourself a space that pushes you to be out there. And in your housing, were you living with other people on Erasmus or French students or a mixture? Yeah, it was a mixture. Uh, and I think that was the best. You know, you could share your experiences with other Erasmus students that were from all over the world. And you could, in the same time, meet French students that could help you about, you know, with the practicalities of life um, or tell you which clubs are the best. Or some of them would be like, oh, come on, I'll take you on the night out. And then you'll end up with loads of French people and be like, oh, my God. But <laughs> um, yeah, I think dormitories, it's the best for Erasmus, really. Yeah, to, to really squeeze all of the 
the yeah. mad out of it and the juice out of it. Anything else you want to add about that experience? <laughs> you know what? Anyone who thinks about um, studying or living in, in France and thinks, oh, it's going to be the classic every morning, I'll get my croissant and I'll have my baguette and my coffee. Yes, it's really like that. <laughs> <laughs> And it's fabulous. I think the French people get a lot of bad reputation on being arrogant and very reluctant on mingling with foreigners. It's not true. You need to take them for what they are. But I think that's true for wherever you go. And trying to speak the language and trying to get yourself out there is the most you can do. And then people will be friendly towards you. It takes a lot of courage, but I would strongly recommend to anyone to actually try that out, to try out classes outside of uni, to, you know, go, even if it's just knitting in the afternoon, whatever, you know, whatever you enjoy, try and do it on your year abroad as well to get to know other um, locals. And I've made friendship for life. I love to go back. I'm very happy about it. And I think it's an experience no one should miss out on. It's something that really enriches life forever. Absolutely. The best and the worst parts, I suppose. Well, we tell us a bit more about best and the worst, in your opinion. I think the difficult part about Erasmus uh, for anyone really is that, um, and I talked about this in the last video shortly as well, uh, how you go through different phases. And I think it's crucial for everyone to remind themselves that it's just a year. And yes, you will be facing cultural peculiarities. Sometimes things are very different than home. Um, but that's that's what you're doing that's that's why you're there you're trying to put yourself out there to you know enhance your knowledge and get to know other things D just bear with it and and just try and make the most of it and don't push back don't don't go back on yourself and not go out and mingle i can only say that again for me the worst uh, really was trying to figure out and that, that's a bit of an organizational point trying to figure out all the different things at the same time so like because but I put this on myself to work and study and you know be abroad and everything it was a bit much but it was worth my while you know on the other hand it, it it's a great memory it's a great experience so just prepare for a year that's gonna be very intense emotionally but also energy wise um, and since most people are going back after that to write their bachelor's thesis or their master's thesis, you need time between that to wind down and actually process the things that you've seen. Um, so take time when you go back uh, and, and settle back in, you know, cautiously so that you're actually in the mindset because getting out of that space is difficult. <laughs> Mm. But you finish at the end of the academic year, so you've got the summer. Would you say that's yeah. not a good time to reset? It is, but many people stay, you know, many people stay over the summer to be with their friends. And I would recommend if you can uh, sort out a holiday or something with the friends that you made on Erasmus to maybe like lots of my friends went to the south of France, uh, to the sea and just, you know, have a few weeks off, do that because then it's like a proper holiday, breaking out of, you know, this life that you built for yourself. That's important because otherwise it's gonna seem like a very hard come down after moving from the city then back home. It's a bit difficult and you'll get a bit homesick in a weird way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so yeah, I'm taking that time for transitioning. Good advice. How can someone best prepare for it? I think, you know, taking books is underrated on this. I thought I was gonna go sign up for the classes. Actually, this is something I missed out on, you know, when I talked about signing up for the program. You're gonna have to pick classes when you get to uh, the university that you picked. <sighs> Careful. <laughs> I was just given a one sheet paper, make your crosses, hand it back in. Well, I was being very smart and I thought, well, I'm just gonna pick the subjects I think are interesting and I never asked anyone about the whole structure of the system. I ended up picking master's classes all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that was a bit intense. <laughs> so get someone to explain to you what the M and the A is and the, you know, what it all means. And then you know what kind of classes you pick. And Are you trying to tell me that the French university didn't explain to you the different levels of classes that you had? To choose? No, you're free to pick. You're free to pick. And then if you're stupid enough, not well, to ask. How can you, but that's interesting. How can you even be qualified? Sorry. How can you be qualified to do a master's class if you haven't got a bachelor's degree? I don't understand. See, but this is the thing with Erasmus. People take it very lightly. They okay. just think, well, you can sit in. If you don't pass, well, tough luck. <laughs> so, because that goes back onto my university. You get a degree and, and you get a transcript at that university that you're on Erasmus. Mm -hmm. But if you fail your degree, the problem you have is with your own university. So they left it open to me and they said, well, these are the classes we have. You take your pick. And I did. Uh, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's also challenging. You just need to like take, you asked me how to prepare take all the translation books you need take the books that you've been using the year before to you know look back and just have a peek book an online language class or book a language class at the university most universities offer that for Erasmus students as part of the program mm -hmm. and don't you know don't take this lightly and be like ah, I speak the language it's fine even with English many people take English too much for granted university English is very difficult so if you don't apply for France but you go for the UK or the US or whatever well US would be Erasmus but the UK take a language class because academic language is different it's not anything like a casual chat that we're having right now Exactly. Very good advice. Thank you very much for speaking with us again about that wonderful experience on Erasmus in France. Thank you for having me. Bye.